Hello and welcome back. We've got quite a situation on our hands. Not my hands, but maybe their hands. That's not even on y'all's hands either. Yeah, definitely on their hands. Uh, right, we were just about getting ready to uh, see the murder of Mel when uh, he's kind of talked his way out of it. So let's continue on, find out exactly... Maybe we'll get something from, uh, the white-haired maiden's backstory. Uh, let's go to it. Uh, right, I already read that part. It appeared in the darkness as though they had fused together. The white-haired girl, having finally gathered the courage, began to slowly tell her tale. On the night of the storm, I paid a visit to Rose Manor, this mansion. My father and I were always on the move traveling across the land by foot, so it was only recently that we had heard rumors of Rose Manor. There are several reasons we couldn't stay in one place. First is my unusual appearance. People often find the color of my skin or eyes disconcerting. So after living in one place for long enough, unsettling rumors would begin to spread, forcing us to leave. Another reason was my father's line of work. He painted pictures for a living. But he had trouble finding a patron, so he had to work day to day. Where he was no longer able to find work in a city, we would move. We were birds that migrated without a flock. When we arrived at this town, my father was exhausted and weak. That is when we learned of Rose Manor and the family who dwelled within it. Rhodes is a name my father could never forget. He was, long ago, a painter in service of the Rhodes family. Uh, hold on. Your father was an artist here? I could get his autograph. Yes, you could get his autograph. It was before I was born, so you probably don't remember Lord, ne Lord Mel. So, you knew about us before you came here. For as long as I can remember, I've known the name Rhodes. My father was chased from your house. Just because they didn't like something he painted. Well, I'll be damned. <laughs> Having failed at the Rhodes family, no one else would become his patron. It was said the, the son of the father Rhodes did not like a certain paint, painting made by him. So he decreed that painter be exiled. Just as a good reputation spreads, so, do, so too does a bad one. Branded once again as a, or once as a failure, no one will ever take you in again. You nobles throw your parties and spread your gossip about this painter or that sculptor. The rose you tried to give me is, a, is an example of that. It was certainly crafted with skill, but the jeweler is only known because some aristocrats spoke highly of him. My father's paintings were no less skillful. His was a talent that could not be easily imitated. But no one was willing to separate the art from the artist. The Rhodes family stole everything from my father. But even thrown out onto the streets, his only skill was painting. That was all he could do to earn a living. What little with li blah, blah, blah. what little money we had for food he gave to me. He did er anything, man. I'm sorry. He did anything he could to ensure my survival, even at the expense of his own well-being. My father passed away in this town. Up until his last breath, he was only ever concerned about me. He held me in his arms and ran his fingers through my hair, an apologetic look on his face. If I had a normal appearance, I'm sure life would have been much easier. He was always telling me how sorry he was for making life so hard, even though it's not his fault I look like this. So is it your mother's fault? Cause we gotta explain the genetics somehow. I disdain the Rhodes family for putting us... No, for putting my father through such hardship. I imagined you were still living in decadence, 
acting as though nothing had ever happened. No, you wouldn't even care about the fate of one simple painter. Our lives mean nothing to you. And so, I sought to bring misfortune upon you. And that's why you tried to kill me. <laughs> I, <laughs> I realized a little too late to ham it up. In truth, I had wanted to take the master's life, but your father spent so much time outside the mansion. And so, you're right. If they lost me, it would put my family in a very difficult position. They'd have to make a new son. <laughs> that is the whole of my tale. You now know about my father and how I feel about you. Having, having told you of the blackness in my heart, I cannot go on living like nothing has changed. Please give me punishment. Why? Why would you have me put the one I love through any more misery? I am not fit for your affection. Not only because I am not aristocratic, but because every time I spoke with you, I did so holding this darkness in my heart. Does that not unnerve you? In the end, it was my family's actions that caused you so much suffering. Would you that would that your father was still alive? Perhaps I could have done something. I'm sorry. And besides, you hesitated. You didn't actually kill me. Unless... <laughs> what am I even to punish you for? As you said, you had countless opportunities, but you cannot bring yourself to do it. Tell me why you couldn't kill me. Because I... If it's because I've given you enough reason to have even the slightest bit of interest in me, then please like me. Please, I'm begging for attention. Nothing was as I envisioned it. What? I assumed the resonance of Rose Manor would be cold, people who believed that wealth and rank mattered above all. But on the night of the storm, the mistress was the first one to extend her hand to me. I arrived at the mansion disguised as a beggar. Actually, disguised is not the right word, as many nights I only survived on the generosity of others. The mistress did not send me away when she saw me. Quite the opposite. She took me in as a servant. So that was Mother's doing. I could scarcely believe she would invite a stranger into her home, that she would treat a stranger with such compassion. I thought perhaps she knew who my father was. But I had never met any of you before, so she must simply be that kind-hearted of a woman. And the mistress continued to treat me with kindness, despite my disquieting appearance and the darkness in my heart. In time, I began to grow less and less sure of myself. Was what I meant to do truly right? Were the things I felt truly justified? But it was a certain fact that my father was here and that he had been chased out. So I decided I should take your life to put an end to everything before I wavered any further. And then... And then... And then... You too were kind to me. It's all your fault. Because you laugh with such affection. Because you give me smiles like that. Because you say the things you say. You... I'm sorry. No, no need to apologize. Just please remove your hand from my neck. <laughs> I'm so happy to hear that. Despite uh, the unusual circumstances. Please don't say you want to leave. Don't ask me to punish you. I couldn't do anything for your father, but at least... Allow me to do something for the daughter he cared for so dearly. You are far too kind-hearted. I'll be happier with you around. You can become a real aristocrat. Join the ranks, which is probably not what you were going for in the first place. It's kind of weird I suggested that. Huh? There are families that would be willing to adopt you. 
Especially knowing it would bring them ties to the Rhodes family in the near future. Are you saying... Um, you're gonna sell me, or... <laughs> you're gonna hand me off, like, another prize? As long as you're okay with that, of course. I don't understand. How could you possibly say that? I have my hand around your neck, even as we speak. It seems reasonable enough to me. I'm desperately looking for some way to not have to lose you. But I couldn't. I don't even... I don't know any etiquette or social customs. How could I... You can learn all of that. You're pretty and naturally graceful. You'll do just fine. It's like all they require. Um... You are such an aristocrat, Lord Mel. What? The, the way you can come up with compliments so easily. Uh, only for you. Nellie says my poetry has as much charm as a dissertation. I don't understand theater. It puts me to sleep. Heh <laughs> You laughed. Thank goodness. Ah. Keep smiling. You don't have to stop. A smile on your face is a smile on mine. No matter how deep the darkness has taken root in your heart, it can always be removed. I believe people are capable of forging their own futures. Aye. What do you say we go to the theater sometime? I promise I won't sleep through it. At the private theater, we can get seats at the far end of the second floor so we don't have to stand. They would be pretty lavish seats, and it would give you a chance to experience the noble life. But, please don't be shy. I can have clothes prepared for you. I'll ask one of the maids who can keep it a secret. Say, the one with the black hair? Oh, not that one. That one knows my rose discoloration thing. She kind of scares me, though. Ha ha ha. I don't know what I'm supposed to say. How could you show such compassion for me? I try to inflict harm upon you. Am I allowed to feel such joy? For every day you suffered, a day of happiness. That's how it has to be. So stand by my side. He softly whispered the girl's name. Wait, what? How does he know her name? Huh? For several long moments, her lips trembled in trepidation, but in time she squeezed them together and made a smile. He wrapped his arms around her unbelievably slender, frail frame, holding her tight in an affectionate um, embrace. Mel approached me the next day. He explained to me the course of events and then asked me to dress her up more beautifully than any other noble girl had ever been. She was already a very pretty girl, so even without much effort on my part, simply putting her in a dress, she radiated beauty. I was quite partial to her smile, so I agreed to help, thinking that if it would lead to their happiness, I could not ask for anything more. I never anticipated what would happen next, though. Perhaps my hopes were unreasonable after all. Fade to black. All right, we'll keep going a little more. <laughs> now, now, Nelly, you love the theater, so don't look so cross. <laughs> Nelly was out with a man other than her brother that evening, a rare sight indeed. And she was quite clearly in a foul mood. I will not stand for this! That I should have to marry a man as disagreeable as Arthur! It's unthinkable! The young man at her side was Nellie's fiancé, selected by her parents. On any other occasion, she would have snubbed an invitation from any man who is not ne Mel, but she had little to say in this matter, or she had little say in this matter. She was, for lack of a better word, forced to go out with him. 
and oh how furiously she fought against it. She had shoved aside the Abigail, trying to fasten her corset, locked herself in her room, and sobbed for quite some time. It required the combined efforts of several of us to get her ready and out the door for her date. Come now, you should at least pretend you're enjoying yourself. Or do you want to think people, or do you want people to think we don't get along? Do we get along? Well, I want to for what it's worth. What it's worth to you is my name, not me. Are you really going to be like that? I went out of my way to take you to your favorite play. The least you could do is be a little more kinder to me. What was it called again? Romeo and Juliet? It's been running for six or seven years now. A family like yours or mine could pay to have a brand new script written. So why should we have to see an old play at a theater full of commoners? It may be private, but even so, ha! I would rather just have a show put on on my estate. Stop talking already! Why should I... Why should I have to marry someone like you? I have absolutely no desire to marry you. Whatever it takes, I will put a stop to this. I'll talk to Father as many times as I must. Please, don't make such a scene. It's shameful. There are people around, remember? You represent your family. Besides, our families are hardly strangers to one another. Try as you might, I doubt you can get rid of me. <laughs> Jesus. No matter what you say, you can't break this engagement. You don't. Your parents gave you too much freedom, and look at what a spoiled little girl you become because of it. Goodness, you're being quite the handful. I feel like saying progressively voice this guy, my mouth is just getting more bunched up and compact. Oh, get off your high horse! No, you're the one on the high horse, Nelly. <laughs> you are going to be my wife. You gotta at least put some effort into liking me. You know, <coughs> horses are called Nelly a lot in troops, I think. <laughs> what happens when I take you to a social engagement and you act like this? It's shameful to the both of us. This coming from someone who used to call me Lady Nelly. What's your problem? When you choose to act like a lady, I'll gladly call you that again. Goodness gracious. Put yourself in my shoes for a second. I have to marry a bratty little girl because it'll help my family. How dare you talk about me that way? You're not a damned princess. Open your eyes. If you think talking to father will get you out of this marriage, you're welcome to try, but I doubt he'll have it, though. Fuck you! <laughs> Otherwise, you can just go complain about your friends. Oh, that's right. As far as I'm aware, you don't have any friends. Enough! As you wish. This is so frustrating. Why should I have to listen to this jerk mock me? I have Mel. I know. If Father won't listen to me, I'll ask Mel to talk to him. Mel will be able to convince him. Come on now, your favorite play is about to start. Maybe you should face forward. Enjoy it while it lasts. You won't be talking down to me much longer. Huh? What? Alright. Next time on Hooky Hour. We will see how this play scene unfolds. I'll see you then. Bye!